All right, so we're going to start with our... We'll start by opening the file and unlocking it. I like to name my files something simple like Winterpad. And now I'm going to make a new layer, drag it below. It's a white background, which we're going to use for the mask. And now I'm clicking to make the default black and white foreground background. And then I paste it behind it. And now I just created a layer mask. And as you see, wherever I paint, it disappears. So I'm going to use that lasso tool, which I select using L, and draw around it. And now I'm going to delete that. And if you look, it creates uh, like this black space that is a mask. And if you double click it like that, it'll take you to a menu where you can feather it and smooth it out. So that's kind of nice. You can do it afterwards. I like the magnetic lasso because it lets you be kind of more patient. Your finger won't get as tired. And this tool lets you refine the border and make it look really nice and not too choppy. So I'm going to really quick finish up this mask. I'm doing it pretty quickly just so it looks good for the example. And as soon as that's done, I'm going to merge the two layers together because I'm not going to really need to edit that anymore and it can just be kind of bing simplified. We're going to duplicate it. You want to click to the right there. Duplicate the layer. Name it something like Pad Sharpened. And we're going to go up to Filter, Unsharp Mask. And depending on what you're going for, you can do a lot of stuff with this tool for bringing out details and contrast. Um, it can be nice for just giving things more di dimension and definition when they're small. Down here, I click to add a layer mask, which I think you've done before. And then with the paintbrush, I can click X and toggle the background colors will be black or white, and that's kind of like a mask or unmask. And once you're happy with it, we're going to merge the layers. So now we're going to add an adjustment layer. You click down here, add levels, and this is cool because you can keep changing it and you don't have to mess with the original image at all. Uh, vibrance is nice. It's a good way to saturate your images without making them look digital and crappy. So that's like as you desire, it's kind of the salt and pepper, the sriracha there. Okay, now I'm going to merge these two layers together because now I'm going to show you how to do replace color so you can tweak the colors a little bit. So you go to Adjustments, Replace Color, and you select the color you want with the eyedropper, and you can adjust the fuzziness, um, and then that chooses how much of the color you want. And then from there, you can tweak the hue and the saturation. So this can be a really great way just to be creative and mess around with the colors. Or like, let's say that blue color didn't photograph right. You can fix it a little bit in here. For exporting, we're going to want to go to File Export, Save for Web. And with a photograph, you always want to save it as a JPEG as the highest quality. Um, logos and text, you'll use PNG but a photograph is going to be JPEG, quality 100%. The file size is about a megabyte and a half, which is pretty reasonable. And the image size on the right bottom hand side is less than 2,000 pixels or so. So that's totally good. Shopify wants 2,000 pixels as the maximum dimension, and you might as well take advantage of that big size for high quality. Save it and uh, that's it. That's all, folks.